thanks for joining us. You know, first up, what is the likelihood that this is the debris from the missing flight, uh, MH370? Yeah, well, it, it's hard, of course, to put a real likelihood to it. But what we know is that it is certainly not impossible. So the uh, currents and the way that the currents move stuff around in the Indian Ocean would be consistent with something that uh, landed in the ocean or that, that started in the ocean 17 months ago somewhere near to Australia, making it all the way across the Indian Ocean and ending up in Reunion Island now. Um, so as, as, for the, as for the ocean currents, they certainly won't rule it out. So if the debris is then confirmed to be part of MH370, how does this then affect uh, the search? Will the search area be expanded or change completely from where it is at the moment? Well, I'm, I'm not sure it will be completely changed, but of course this is a very big clue for the search team because what they can do is they can try and backtrack where something that they find now on the beach, where that was 17 months ago. And that is not going to be easy. It's not just going back and finding exactly here's the X marks the spot. Of course, because the ocean is so turbulent and because it's so chaotic, it's actually really hard to predict it very deterministically. But we can roughly say an estimate and we can make an area of probably a few hundred miles across where it is most likely that something that ended up on this beach might have come from. And that, together with the other information that we have already about the pings and everything, might actually help the search team. Um, Dr. Sibyl, you, know, you mentioned that backtrack unpredictable. So why has it taken so long for the first piece of MH370, you know, if it is confirmed, to actually show up? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the ocean is just an enormous place. And the way that the ocean currents work is that actually they drive most of the debris towards the centers of the ocean, so very far away from land. Um, it is quite unlikely for something to wash up on a beach. Uh, in this situation. And of course, you have to remember that there's enormous amount of beaches around the Indian Ocean. And it, it, it might be, it, it, there's just not so much debris probably. So I wouldn't, um, I wasn't surprised that it was so hard to find anything at all. Well, current patterns are sort of the key to this, I suppose. How exact is the science of predicting them? The science of, 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 of predicting it, uh, so we know quite a bit about the ocean currents and we know the large scale circulation. So we know kind of like roughly how the ocean currents move. But the problem is that actually the whole system is very chaotic. It's very similar to say the weather where no weatherman can predict the weather more than a week in advance. No, no matter how smart they are, no matter how good their tools are. It's a fundamental limit of the physics of the atmosphere. And the same applies to the ocean. A fundamental a limit of the physics of the ocean says that we can't do very good estimates of where uh, debris was 17 months ago. It's just the system is too chaotic. It's a proverbial butterfly that flaps its wings.